All right. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Donna Richardson. I'm the Chief of Facility Management and Engineering here at Grand Canyon National Park. Um, we're going to take a little look. This was a great segue from Nick's uh, topic into the wastewater and water infrastructure here at Grand Canyon National Park. Um, the Trans Canyon water line cannot be looked at alone. It's all tied together with the infrastructure. So I will begin, I should know that, begin by giving just a little bit of history because um, I know we have varying amounts of information out here in the, in the audience. So I apologize for some of you, this may be repeat, but for others to give you a little history. We've been working on uh, infrastructure improvements at Han Grand Canyon for years and years. And, most recently, uh, with 1995 general management plan, we've uh, built a new visitor center, which opened approximately 2000. The, the visitor center parking lots came along about 10 years later in 2009, 2010. We have the new Paiute housing unit, sustainable housing, with 90 different units for our staff. Um, and we've uh, renegotiated and reestablished two of our biggest con concession contracts and which has led to a number of different construction projects here in the South Rim. Um, one which you'll see right now with the Maswick Lo South Lodge being rebuilt, uh, the La Yavapai work that has taken place this past year, a lot of good improvements. Okay, battery time. All right, so we continue with that infrastructure improvement need, but right now the park is really focusing uh, primarily on uh, water and wastewater infrastructure. All that dates back, uh, the pipeline is over 50 years old. A lot of the underground infrastructure of the collection system and distribution system dates back to 1920s, 1930s. Uh, and we have four different wastewater treatment plants here in the park. The South Rim, Phantom Ranch, North Rim, and Desert View, all of varying ages. Uh, first, uh, you see four priorities here, and they're kind of, they are really set in priorities. They all need to be done, uh, but the first two are what we are focusing on first right now, and that's to improve our potable water supply and replace the Trans Canyon water line. So Nick talked a lot about the hydrology, and uh, so this ties very nice into that. Second is to modernize our wastewater treatment plants. Um, these tie very closely together. You could, m most people think of, well, you could do one or you could do the other, or you could do both, but if we choose to change our water source or what we dispose of of our water once it's treated, it has to be treated by a treatment plant. So it, they do tie together and they have to, a treatment plant has to be designed to treat what source is coming to it. And of course, the agent distribution collection system I just mentioned. And then our fourth uh, is to improve our sustainability of our in reclaimed water. So you'll see a lot of purple hydrants and purple pipes and signs out there, and that's all our reclaimed water system. Uh, what I, one thing I want to preface with is everything that we're working with today at this point in time are Class C estimates. So the numbers are, are um, Class C estimates. They're not exact yet. These things will change as we get closer and closer to final design. Uh, but right now for the full, deferred, the full deferred maintenance of the water wastewater infrastructure is estimated about $300 million uh, to replace it all. And uh, I think we will all, all understand that probably will be low as we continue to move forward. And just some general stats, you know, 6.2, 6.3 million visitors a year, we all know that. 250 year-round residents, again, that varies a little bit. But what I do want to point out is the 450 million gallons of water that we use here in the South Rim, uh, South Rim Desert View Inner Canyon. This does not include the North Rim. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, 18 million gallons of water storage here on the South Rim. Um, we have two major inner canyon pumping stations. And then, uh, of course, 100, uh, 1,100 hotel rooms, which that will have to be updated with Maswick work. Um, fire suppression system for all of these buildings. Uh, when we look at the gallons of water storage in the tanks, you, you can take off, I'm trying to remember the exact number, but it's, we have to maintain five feet in all of our tanks to have water suppression for our fire system. So we typically lose that amount of water. Um, four wastewater treatment plants, 
70 miles, 70 plus miles of water mains, and then 150 plus miles, some that we, we believe we don't even know all that's underground because of the old mapping systems of uh, collection and distribution lines. All right, now to jump into the water, the Trans Canyon water line specifically. It's kind of um, a list of projects that we have going on now and will continue to move forward in the next few years. And the first is uh, replacing pumps one and two at Indian Garden. So the water from the Trans Canyon water line, the current water line is being pumped. It, as Nick says, gravity flows from Roaring Springs down through Phantom Ranch up to Indian Garden. And from Indian Garden, we have to pump it here to the rim to go into those storage tanks. Uh, there originally were three pumps. Um, over the years, that varied greatly. When uh, the last 10 or 12 years, it's been down to two pumps, two pumps options at um, Indian Garden. And um, we are now replacing pump one with two smaller pumps that will run in tandem. So it's called pump one and two replacement. Uh, this fall, we'll move into replacing pump three. Pump three is currently the one that's pumping water to keep us going now while one and two are being replaced. So once those are replaced and we go through a three to four month test period, make sure they're operating properly, then we'll go, we'll move into replacing pump three. We are also working on our drinking water supply. So we have a consent order on Roaring Springs. I know that sounds scary, but um, we have re-looked at, it's really not scary, we have re-looked at our water source. And as Nick was saying, we don't really know where that water is coming from. The park is playing on the side of safety and for the next 50 to 100 years. And we're considering all of our drinking water as water under the influence of surface water. That means we want to treat it. We don't want to just take it right out of Roaring Springs in the future. We want to make sure we're treating that. So that includes also a water treatment uh, system that we currently don't have. And then uh, also we'll be starting this uh, next couple months actually, we'll be working on our pumps uh, at Roaring Springs. So the water that comes out of Roaring Springs majority of it comes here to, well, flow, either flows down Bright Angel Creek or comes here to the South Rim. But there is a small amount that's pumped to the North Rim to keep our operations on the North Rim. That's a totally separate water line. It's a four inch steel pipe that runs totally separate. So when we talk about the pumps on Roaring Springs, their sole purpose is to pump water to the North Rim. They're not a direct part of this Trans Canyon water line. But again, um, it's all tied together and for the North Rim to operate, we have to have those pumps running to get water there. As we move through the Trans Canyon water line replacement, we also have to think about potable water for all the inner canyon, for Manzanita, for Cottonwood, for Phantom Ranch, for Indian Garden. Uh, so that's part of the design phase we're working on now. And then in order to build a new water line in its infrastructure in the Inner Canyon. As challenging it is to work in the Inner Canyon, we need to have a way to stage everything here in the rim. The facilities, the operations to be able to, to bring the piping in, to bring all the equipment in into the canyon uh, to build this new water line. So we'll be looking at expanding. Just a couple weeks ago, we did a, actually it was a week ago, we did a workshop on looking at the Hellebase, looking at contractor trail pads, looking at a lay down area for supplies and materials. At this point, it's looking to that much of that infrastructure will be built out behind the facility management in the helipad, current helipad base. Um, so out of the public view, out of the you know, heavy traffic areas. Um, but we are looking at building a second helipad, a second uh, building at the helibase for the contractor, so the park will be able to continue to operate their needs and the contractor will be able to operate to do the water line project and its infrastructure. Um, it will be merged and all ran under the park's hell base command though. And then of course I mentioned only to uh, upgrade everything to current ADEQ standards and looking towards the future. So what we decide to build and what we do build is viable for the next, hopefully, 50 more years. Okay, just a little detail on the current water line, because um, what we want to do is look at the current and look at what changes might be taking place. 
Uh, again, originally constructed in 64 to 70, sole potable water supply for the inner canyon and the south rim facilities. It's really a uh, sole water source for the north rim as well. Again, we're averaging about 6.3 million visitors, current residents, about 100,000 inner canyon hikers, and of course the critical historic infrastructure, all the infrastructure, but also the historic infrastructure we, we really want to protect through fire protection. The current pipeline is 12 and a half miles. It consists of both six inch and eight inch aluminum pipe. And uh, as both Nick and I said, it's gravity, flow, gravity flowed from Roaring Springs at about 5,200 feet above sea level, the Phantom Ranch. At Phantom Ranch, we currently see pressures coming through the pipeline at about 700 PSI. So for those that are down there having issues with to toilet flushing and and uh, things, PRV valves blowing, that's why. And, that's, and through this process, um, we're hoping that when we will be able to rectify that problem, bring those pressures down to a more reasonable number. And then, of course, up to Indian Garden at about 3,800 3, feet. Just a little map of how that all works right now. All right, it's better than I am. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. All right, I won't point. You can see Roaring Springs, where the black line and the orangish red line separate. Uh, that's where Roaring Springs and that black line is our four inch line that goes to the North Rim. Um, the, over the last few years, we've had more breaks on that line, uh, or I should say bigger and more extensive breaks on that line than we have had on the trans Canyon water line. And we jokingly talk about maybe we're replacing the wrong water line first. Um, but that will come in this suite of projects someday we'll be looking at replacing that line as well. So this is what we currently have, water flowing from Roaring Springs down serving Cottonwood, Manzanita, down to Phantom Ranch, uh, through the box area, which um, a, lot, a lot of people say today that um, it's the area we have the most breaks. And for the last several years, it has been the area we have the most pipeline breaks. But if we, I've done some digging, I've been in this position a couple, almost two years now, done some digging on, um, pipeline breaks, where they are, how often, what season. And actually, uh, it's just been recent that we've had a lot of breaks. Recent meaning the last three to five years in that area. Prior to that, it was throughout the whole canyon. So it's, uh, that's not just the only vulnerable area. Again, we joke internally about, that's because most of the rest of the pipeline's been replaced already, piece by piece. All right, to jump a little into what we're thinking about for the uh, proposed trans Canyon water line, we are kind of at a very critical point right now. As I mentioned this past week, we had a series of workshops with Denver Service Center. Uh, the contractors have been brought in through Denver Service Center to work on the trans Canyon water line. And we are still at the point of making the final decision on what our, new water, what our water source will be long term. Um, many of you probably have heard different discussions about test wells, water intake, continuing the Roaring Springs. Uh, well, one thing we do know is that the test wells are now off the table. We did get a second drill rig in last fall, and uh, the testing we did with that, those drill, that drill rig found that the, it's not a viable water source. It did not produce enough water uh, out of those wells to provide the million gallons a day we need to pump to the rim. So those are off the table, which now leaves the potential for surface water intake at Bright Angel Creek at Phantom Ranch on the Bright Angel. Angel Creek, or continuing to use uh, Roaring Springs. And um, both of those are still on the table. This past week, we looked at a lot of new information as well as all the information that had been gathered in the past um, to reevaluate and relook at what the final decision will be. Uh, it's kind of important that we're kind of at a point right now that this is a critical step because, as I mentioned earlier, depending on the water source, It'll depend on what we have to build for infrastructure, what kind of treatment plant we need, what kind of wastewater treatment plant. The one big factor we do know is that the water at, at Bright Angel Creek, at Phantom Ranch, has a much higher hardness level, um, which means we have to treat for hardness before we distribute it to our customers, so all of you, all of our residents, and all of our visitors. Um, and that produces a brine solution so we have to determine how we're gonna handle that brine solution, whether it'll go through a treatment plant, whether we'll have settling ponds, 
All those things are on the table right now. But before we can move forward on the treatment plan, we need to know what we're going to be treating for. So the second uh, section, so the, water, the intake um, is to be determined here in the next couple weeks. Um, March 9th was the time frame we're supposed to all get back together and kind of reevaluate and make a decision going forward. And uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that have had provided input in their thoughts and uh, have been involved in one way or another, and we thank you for that, because um, this is going to be our water source for the next at least 50 or more years. Uh, Phantom Ranch to Indian Garden um, will be about three miles of new pipeline, so no matter which water source we go with, um, this, the rest of this stays consistent. So we'll be replacing the line that currently goes from Phantom Ranch to Indian Garden and up the cliff face. Uh, we've been talking about potentially slip lining the existing pipeline. Um, there's pluses and minuses there. So that's still to be worked out. A critical piece of the um, whole puzzle is upgrading the electric as well. So we could go through all this work but never run any pumps down at Phantom Ranch because of the electric system. So the whole power grid has to be upgraded here in the south rim and then three-phase electricity ran from Indian Garden to Phantom Ranch. We have it three-phased to Indian Garden right now, but we only have single-phase to Phantom Ranch. So that will be upgraded as part of this project as well. Uh, for Indian Garden, um, I th it seems that we're, I think we have settled on the best way to serve Indian Garden is to backfeed it from the south rim rather than building a treatment facility uh, at Indian Garden. Um, the, the change of treating our water has put, you know, kind of put a whole different spin on how we handle our water here at Grand Canyon. So we have to think about every customer and where they get their water. So Manzanita, Cottonwood, those folks who probably, what we're thinking of right now, will have single, treat, single um, source treatment at those locations. And then at Indian Garden, since we go through a lot more water there, um, we'll probably be back feeding rather than building five minutes. Yep, good. Rather than building a whole treatment plant uh, down there. And then, of course, the south rim, as we we're talking about, is the construction um, of a million gallon a day water treatment system to, to treat all that water and then put it out to the public. This diagram is virtually the same. The only different, real difference here is taking out that pipe, se section of pipeline from Roaring Springs to Phantom Ranch, letting the water flow naturally down through the creek and then collecting it, collecting it at Phantom Ranch. Just more of an aerial view, again, the white section labeled the box, Ribbon Falls area, would uh, not, that section of pipe would not be used any longer. Uh, just a little o uh, overview of the, the cost estimates, where we are right now. As I mentioned earlier, it, these are all Class C estimates and will be refined as we move forward, uh, but kind of gives you a little breakdown of where we're at. And again, this, this will be on the website if anyone wants to dig further into it. Uh, the second section, so that's really the Trans Canyon water line uh, in providing uh, improved treated water. Uh, the second section we're work working on simultaneous is our wastewater treatment plants. And just to give you a little bit of overview, as I already mentioned, we have four. The two uh, priorities are both Phantom Ranch and South Rim. The Phantom Ranch wastewater treatment plant was built and designed for much smaller visitation than we're seeing there um, and is currently in a near failure state. If anyone's been down there recently, they'll see, you'll see out behind the, the pump operator's house um, an open trench, and that's our discharge trench, which had failed. It's been, we just rebuilt it, our crews in-house rebuilt it, and we're working with ADEQ to, to make sure that is operating properly before we re, rebury it. But um, we are just kind of holding on by the skin of our teeth down there and trying to treat uh, the wastewater because the plant is so undersized. So that's one of our top priorities. And then again, the second one is here in the south rim, as I mentioned, that is tied directly to our water source and know what we're gonna treat. Uh, just for those folks that may not know, our water from for Desert View um, is piped right from our tanks here on the south rim, out Desert View Drive, 
there's a pump station over near Yavapai and uh, serves all of the Desert View area. So we just have a little bit going on here at the park, um, but uh, as you can see, we still have a lot more to do. We have a lot on the way, a lot of things that will keep moving forward, and then uh, we have a lot more to do after that when we come to the distribution and the reclaimed water. So look forward to taking questions after the last presentation. Thank you.